Hi everyone in cloud computing and welcome to episode 21 of the Cloud Computing Training Show with Brad Nelson, an internationally recognized and world's number one cloud industry expert and thought leader, David Linthicum. This show is sponsored by Nelson Hilliard, cloud computing recruitment specialist placing great people in cloud, IoT, fintech and AI. In this week's show, David and I will be talking about that Microsoft is looking to upskill 5,000 Australian public service workers with cloud computing skills by 2020 through an education initiative as it looks to address a growing skills shortage. Hi Dave, great to see you and nice to have you back on the training show this week. Yeah, it's nice to be back and also greetings from Seattle. I got my coffee, I got my hat and actually a company that's not based in Seattle. So I'm looking forward to a nice show. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's a it's a great point this, and it's really making a, a big difference to that skills shortage out there for for cloud uh, specialists and professionals that that you know industry is certainly feeling. Um, do you think that we'll be seeing this sort of training in Australia and other countries? And are we looking to move more towards a free training initiative? Yeah, I think so because it's so so cheap and repeatable. I mean, uh, years ago you had to have classroom training, and then we went to CBT training where we actually did kind of forms-based skill training, things like that. You know, now we turn this into an art. We can deliver you know very robust training that's mixed in with hands-on use of the uh, particular technology. In this case, Microsoft, but you can substitute AWS and, and Google and get people up to speed on the technology. So this is a win, 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 win for the uh, cloud providers, Microsoft, uh, Amazon, Google, and we I throw Alibaba in there as well as, well as some other smaller players. Because the more people are trained up in their stuff, and the more people using their stuff, the more likely they're gonna get, um, you know, get the business. I mean, this is very much like what Apple did, you know, back in the 80s. And so what they did is equipped uh, elementary schools with, you know, Apple-based computer, Apple II at the time was was the standard. And when those people got into high school and got into college, they all gravitated toward Apple computers because they wanted to use those because they used those as an education tool. Well, that was a lot more expensive than this because what we're doing is putting up a website and putting up some videos and we're allowing people to get educated in our tools and technology. Uh, and so this is going to be offered, you know, in basically as a, you know, almost like grants from the uh, cloud providers this year, but uh, next year it's everything's going to be free. Your ability to get certified in the technology. I'm sure there's going to be a small fee so you can get a certificate and they can register you and things like that. But just general training in terms of how to use Azure and how to use Google and how to use AWS, um, you know, that's going to be commoditized and it's going to be free for people who are looking for those particular platforms. Now, architecture courses and the ability to kind of make this thing integrated together and you know, do some planning and business case stuff, you know, probably still have to pay for that, but I wouldn't look to pay for, and I would actually complain about paying for, um, skill sets or uh, computer-based training that's specific to particular technology. I would tell them that's an advertising cost for you. So you go ahead and pass it directly to us. So it's going to get to free, if not this year, next year. It's very interesting, actually. You, you raised some very interesting points, and I think there's some real potential fear factors around that from a, an independent training provider. How do you see these business models that potentially are going to be dominated by, you know, Microsoft Azure, AWS, Google, Alibaba? You know, if people, if the big players can control the training, where do you see the independent training companies sitting within that? Well, I think they can control training for their stuff and they're going to be probably better at it than the independent providers because it's their technology. Uh, however, there still needs to be security and governance and integration and, you know, all these other what you know satellite skills which are around the uh, particular technology. When I look at cloud computing projects that I work on, you know, understanding Microsoft and Azure and Google is just a small part of the game. Uh, ultimately, it's about how they hook together and how to change infrastructure and how to do migration of applications and how to deal with data, how to build systems and design them in a proper way. And I think the existing training companies are going to make a heyday and probably a lot of money, you know, in, in, in publishing those courses. And full disclosure, I do those for lynda.com. And so it's you know, just, and that's because there's nothing in there that's advertising based. I'm not selling, you know, we're not selling technology. We're actually just kind of selling skill sets. But if it's IBM, if it's Microsoft, if it's somebody that's selling particular technology, um, I don't think they should charge for the training. And I think the training should be exceptional, you know, really kind of world class. And I think the more they do that, it's in essence advertising. They should probably, uh, you know, write into their budget as so, marketing 
right in their budget is so, so people can get up to speed on their stuff. You know, there's no reason I shouldn't be able to go home on the weekend and for free, um, you know, basically use, get Microsoft training or our AWS uh, provider training, very much like I see videos on YouTube. I mean, hell's bells. I mean, I can learn how to uh, do my plumbing on YouTube. Why can't I learn how to use AWS? <laughs> so true. It's so true. And I think like you've already said, it's it's going to be a win-win because uh, the more people that are trained up for free, the greater return they're going to get on the, the platforms actually being rolled out through all the, those organizations where the, the skill sets within that particular um, yeah, designated brand of Azure or, or AWS is going to be the strength of the company. So it really makes, it can make a lot of sense to give the training for free because uh, there'll be more people that are able to facilitate it. So I think that's a, that was a great point you made. Yeah, and I like the word upskill. I've never heard that before. I guess it's like upgrade or you know up, upload. Um, so uh, the reality is too that this comes with a certain amount of um, effort that has to be um, put forth by the students. So this information isn't something we put on our heads and absorb. We have to pay attention. And so if we're going to upskill 5,000 Australia public service uh, workers, with cloud computing skills, you know, and specifically Azure, then they're going to have to actually put the time in to make it happen. And so that's where I think we're going to run into some issues. I think people are probably not going to want to put the time and effort or not have the aptitude, you know, to understand how to leverage cloud computing technology. So this is about people who have the um, looking to put forth the effort and also have the aptitude of doing this. So this isn't necessarily getting out to every man, woman, and child out there who wants to be skilled in cloud computing. Yeah, I just want to add to that as well. You're absolutely right. The, th the thing is, that you can you can lead that horse to the water. Obviously, you can't make it drink it. Uh, but the point is, is that sometimes people don't see a, a value in free. Um, and, and that can be a real a mindset and an aptitude problem with regards to actually committing to something that's not at any particular financial cost to the individual. Do you think that, that potentially could be a, a problem there with the people that are going to be getting the, the free training? Yeah, I think so. I think that some people always have a get what you pay for kind of attitude. So I think I would put a very steep registration process around this. I would um, make sure that they complete the training in a certain amount of time in order to get the credit. Um, I would make them put in some um, some effort into uh, what's going in there so they feel a bit of pain. Uh, I remember, you know, in running around doing the speaking stuff years back that, you know, when I charge nothing uh, to speak, um, I would get, you know, probably some minorly interested people who would show up, uh, and also a lot of people would cancel the, the you know, talk the last time because of some evolving priority. But if I charged something, um, that they had a tendency to kind of more value more what I was doing. Uh, and so it was a, it's kind of a psychological thing. And I think the same thing with this, if you pay for something, you're going to pay attention and make sure you show up for the training. If you don't pay for something, it's probably not going to be as valued to you. That's why I'm saying when they do this, that the cloud providers should put a very rigid set of um, uh, evaluation criteria around it. You have to, you know, finish it in a certain amount of time in order to get credit for it. Uh, and I even say, you know, do it like this: if you know you put up a hundred bucks, um, we're going to go ahead and give you the training. If you pass it, we'll give you the hundred bucks back, and if you don't, we keep it. Uh, that's probably not a bad, a bad uh, alternative. I, I think that sounds right. At least they've committed something for that, that gain of knowledge. And, and you'd, you'd like to think that that will get them focused on, you know, getting their, getting their money back and getting their qualification, <laughs> which would be nice. Yeah, you would think. I was a college professor for 10 years and uh, I couldn't get a lot of that stuff working. And so very difficult to get people to pay attention. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Dave, thanks for being part of the training show. I know you've got a, a, a pretty hectic schedule this last couple of weeks flying all around the world. So look, I fully appreciate you being part of the show this week. Thanks for, thanks for coming on board again. It's my pleasure. Cheers, guys. <laughs> Cheers, Dave. Well, thanks for watching, everyone. We, we do hope you enjoyed watching this week's training show and you got some insight out of that. Uh, please do click below in the, the description box because David's got a link there to all his Linda courses as well. Um, so, yeah, check those out. They're pretty cool. And remember to like, comment and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on the future videos and the previous ones that we've done because we've done lots now and they're, they're pretty cool and get some great feedback. Uh, we've also got the iTunes podcast, which you can subscribe to as well, which goes out weekly. Uh, but, yeah, thanks for watching and look forward to next week.